Welcome everyone to another edition of Pillar to Post, where we bring you news, rumors, and whatever the hell is going on in the wrestling world. Now, tonight, we aren't going to just discuss what's going on in WWE at the moment. There's big news in the UFC as well as in uh, IWGP. So, I'm going to bring you a little bit of news from all over. Now, as usual, you are welcome to the dungeon. I am your dungeon dweller. As always, Pete Wall. And this is, like I said earlier, Pillar to Post. Now, before we get the show going, I want to do things a little bit differently this week. I want to give a shout out first to Tyler Black. He is my very first patron, uh, patron on Patreon.com. Now, if you want to become a patron and help this channel grow and uh, pledge and donate, it is not asked of you. It is just there as a way to help out this channel grow. So, you can do that by visiting my Patreon Patreon page, and that is patreon.com backslash pillar to post. All in one word, no caps. Okay, just remember that. So, like I said, Tyler Black, I want to thank you very much for supporting the channel. It is uh, great to know you. I have actually spoken with Tyler on uh, my PS4 and uh, discussed some things with him already, and he's a pretty damn cool guy. I am glad to have met him and spoken to him personally. So, um, you know, is uh, the beginning of a what could be a good friendship. So, I do appreciate the help from Tyler Black. Now, today's podcast is also brought to you by Audible. You can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. They have over 200,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, or any other traveling device you might have that's capable of uh, utilizing the audiobook format. Now... You can take this going camping, fishing, um, you know, going to the gym, wherever you want to take it. It doesn't matter. You're capable of having the book read to you while you're busy with your hands or your feet or whatever. Now, here's the good thing. If you don't want to stick out the 30-day free membership, you can cancel the same day that you download your free audiobook and you keep the book regardless. So... There you have it. You're not just helping out the channel. You're getting something for free as well as you're promoting Audible. And that's what we all want. We want to build a community here. Now, I do have a second sponsor, but I don't have all the complete details yet. They have agreed to sign on and sponsor Pillar to Post. And I will get to that the next show if they have all the details sent to me. And you are going to get some good deals through them. So, um... Probably my next show. Hopefully by then, I'll be able to call their name out and welcome them to Pillar to Post. So, we'll talk about that the next show. Um, now, if you want to con or if you want to check out my Teespring store, that is going to be in the description below, as well as my Facebook merchandise page, my author page on Facebook. And if you want to send me a friend request on Facebook and connect with me there, you're welcome to that is all in the description below. Vidme followers. I appreciate all the followers I have and I, I thank you all and com continue to uh, support the channel any way you can either by becoming a su subscriber on Vidme or becoming a, patri a patron of mine on patreon.com. That all is all in the description below. And Twitter. You can reach me on Twitter at pillar to post 77 that link is in the description below and my email. Now today I told you I was going to be starting something new here, sub stories. Now I'm going to do two of mine that are personal to me, okay? These are for me so that way you guys understand what I am I'm going I'm I'm striving to do here on this channel. So my email is steeldragon1234 at hotmail.com and after today I hope you guys don't shy away from sending personal stories my way be it wrestling related or personal so that is all in the, in the description below and I thank everyone for utilizing it please take advantage of the audibletrial.com 
backslash pillar to post link it helps the channel out a lot thank you very much for that and I want to I want to thank all the new subscribers to the channel now there are some new subscribers to the channel for a reason I am starting the indie uh, fed with the PS4 next week next week that will be started and I want to make sure everyone understands um, that this isn't here to make money off of this is for entertainment um, now if you want to support the channel I'm always happy that you guys want to help out you can uh, pledge to my patreon and uh, you know you can do that for as low as a dollar a month okay it's not re uh, demanded it's not um, it's not enforced I'm just telling you if you feel like helping me out for all the hard work I'm gonna be doing with this Federation I'm involving Facebook wrestlers from their wrestler app as well as youtubers who want to get involved and that invite is still out for viewers as well as um, as podcasters if you want your wrestler involved in this indie league that I've started please post in the comments below I will gladly accept all comers now we've got a pretty big roster now and I am not gonna shy away from doing two brands a week so don't be worried that it's gonna be too much work for me I am all too happy to do this it's a new project it's interesting it's new you know no one else has done this yet they have always used wrestlers that have already been uh, in the business for years be it in the indie series or be it WWE or TNA or Ring of Honor they've always used ready-made wrestlers these are from the minds of wrestling fans okay now for the Facebook uh, wrestling group that uh, the community that's that's joining us here on uh, YouTube I want to make something very clear I cannot make your wrestlers exactly as you have them on the um, on the Facebook app, uh, and it's called uh, Wrest Wrestler Unstoppable. I cannot make them exactly as they look, so I had to take some liberties and just look at it this way: This is your wrestler starting out in the Indies, so it won't she, he or she won't have the exact same look that you have for them in the app you're playing. I tried getting it as close as possible, but it's not always possible to get it exactly the way you like. I've tried to come close, and I hope you're happy with the outcome and the decision I went with to uh, bring your character to life here on Pillar to Post. So, sub-stories. Let's start with a sub-story. And th these are mine. These are my stories, okay? And I'm going to go about my wrestling one first. Now... I've only been to one live event, not in indie, not in the indie match. I'm talking about WWE. I've only ever been to one, and that was back in 2002. My son was about a year old at that time. I went with my brother-in-law. I went with some of our friends. We took a uh, a cab all the way up to Toronto. I lived in um, a little town at the time, so it was about a three-hour drive. And uh, we went all the way up to Toronto to the Air Canada Center. And we got seats fifth row from the, from the ring. It was spectacular to be that close. Now, at the time, Ric Flair was still with the company. We had the big show. We had uh, Marlena. Um, let's see. Trish Stratus was there. The very last match was Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Mick Foley. Or at the time mankind this match got bloody and at the very end of the match Stone Cold was still laid out his face just covered in blood he had the red mask flowing he was down on the ground a big puddle of blood starting to pool around his face he finally gets up staggers to his feet being held up by the ring posts and he yells for his cans of beer so he gets two cans thrown to him and he starts to celebrate now, the show has already been off air for a good five minutes at this point. And we have, let's see, myself, my brother-in-law, uh, a friend of ours called Monkey Boy, another guy called Gareth, and I can't remember who else was all there. There's about six of us in total. 
were standing up on our seats and just screaming at the top of our lungs because Stone Cold has a way of just really, really pulling you into a match. Same with Mick Foley. I'm not going to take anything away from Mick Foley. Um, but it, this was after the show already went off air. So he was, you know, picking himself back up. He's a bloody mess. Man, uh, mankind already long left the ring. He'd been using chair shots on Stone Cold, this and that. Now, for the life of me, I still can't remember who won the match. But it was, the, you know, that after we knew that the show's already over. And you could see Stone Cold was in a hell of a lot of pain. And that excitement that he, he brought out in us, you know, when he finally got to his feet and he started celebrating with his cans of beer, just... You know, I've been a fan since I was a little kid, but that really topped things off. Being at a live event is something that you can never forget. You know, you might forget some details. And I remember um, I, I was taking pictures the whole night, and what pissed me off the most, not one shot turned out. All of it was so dark, and yet the lighting was fantastic that night. Um, I got up real close to Brock Lesnar when he was coming down to the ring, and... It's like, the dude's no taller than I am. And at that time, I hadn't gained so much weight. And it's like, damn, he's no bigger than me, you know? So, and then Big Show comes out and was like, yeah, yeah, he's a big dude. <laughs> you know, I, I felt small. And I, I'm only 6'2", but um, most of the people I know, they're shorter than me. So I always feel tall. And when he came out, I felt like I was normal-sized. And, uh, and then the celebration with Stone Cold afterwards, you cannot ever experience something like that again, unless you are there live in the arena. Um, so if you have a wrestling story that you want to share with me, send it to steel dragon 1234 at hotmail.com. I will read it out loud here on uh, pillar to post. Now my second sub story, this is one about overcoming adversity and health issues and depression you know it, it's not a happy story it's not an exciting story but it's something that I have been striving to overcome and I have overcome a lot of the issues so let me start the story off here um, it's 1998 I got out of jail I was um, I was 18 years old and I got out of jail about um, Three, four months ago at this point. It was October uh, 28th, 1998. And I went to visit my sister. Now, I don't remember anything about this night. I'm just telling you what I was told. Went over to my sister's to visit. She lived up and around the corner of where we live. So about like a good city block. And I guess I'd been there for about an hour and I told them I had to get going. I, I needed to get home earlier had work or something to do in the morning well i got off her street turned up the main street and where we lived and um i got hit by a drunk driver now it was estimated he was going about 120 kilometers an hour i was they estimated i was thrown about 70 75 feet from where i was struck to where i landed all i remember is waking up Three, four days later in the hospital, everything hurting, everything. You would not be believe or or understand the amount of pain someone's going through when they wake up from that kind of shock. Now, from what I was told by doctors and everything, I barely lived. Now, my whole left side of the body ended up being messed up. I'm deaf in my left ear because of this accident. I had my orbital eye socket uh, broken. I had... Uh, fractures all over my skull um, my left elbow was ripped completely out of socket and there's absolutely no cartilage there left anymore it was crushed and they have done nothing to repair it my forearm was uh, broken so now it's being held together by steel plates and screws I had my tibia and fibula broken and they're still being held together with screws my ankle was shattered beyond uh, beyond repair and that was fixed uh, about six months after the accident because they hadn't realized my ankle was crushed. I spent over a year in a wheelchair, struggling to walk again, and um, 
trying, trying with everything I had in me to get back to the life I had. Now, before the accident, I got seriously into training. I wanted to get into the into uh, a wrestling school that was in the town uh, about an hour drive from us. And um, it was a wrestler from the 80s. He had a short stint in WCW. He was known as the Postman. Now, one of my friends started his school about a couple of years before this and finally had talked me into trying to join as well. So that was all in my head. And all the training I had done, the bodybuilding I had done, one month after the accident, 50 pounds of muscle gone in one month. Think about that, you know? Well, years went on, years went on. I didn't know how to read properly anymore. I couldn't write anymore. Writing was gone. It was out the window. And my passion had always been writing. My passions had been wrestling. Uh, I had wanted to get into trucking as well, you know? And all that was gone. Now, I went to see specialist after specialist after specialist, and all of them just wanted to push narcotics on me. Use this painkiller, use that painkiller, use that painkiller, and I refused. Six years of this. Finally, I got to the point where I would walk for a quarter of a block. That would take me 15 minutes. And I was in so much pain I couldn't continue. So finally I accepted my latest doctor's recommendation about going on morphine. Biggest mistake I think I ever made in my life. I was on um, morphine for close to 10 years after this. And over the years he started developing this attitude where he liked to mess around with my prescriptions. He'd jack up the uh, the amount that I was taking, and then he'd drop it way down low next month. And I started feeling it. And it's like, I'm addicted. I'm an addict. At this point, I was an addict. And, and then other drugs were being piled on top of that, on top of that, and on top of that. And it got to the point where one night, and this is about two years ago now, I broke down. I couldn't handle it no more. All my dreams gone out the window. My plans to be a published author. My dreams of becoming a wrestler. My dreams of, of being able to support my family were gone. And I broke down and I'm staring at my bottle of morphine. And... I knew what was, I was going to do, and it just popped in my head, call someone. So I called 911. Now, before, once they answered, I don't know why, I just, I hung up instantly. And my wife came down the stairs to find out what was wrong with me. She was had been sleeping, she woke up, I was in bed with her, and she seen me hold my bottle of pills in the phone, and she asked, what the hell's going on, like, what... What do you need? And I broke down and I told her I just couldn't do it anymore. And the cops ended up showing up because it was a hang up on a 911 call. And I let them take me to the hospital. They put me in the psych ward. I stayed there for two weeks. I didn't have to. I just wanted to. I, I told my wife, I need to stay here for a little bit before I do something bad. Thankfully, thankfully, the doctors at the hospital, they seen the drugs I was on. They told me I shouldn't have even been put on these because of the nerve damage that I sustained in my legs from the accident. The morphine made the neurons and the, um, the nerves fire a lot more rapidly and a lot more excessively, and it makes the pain a lot worse. So they took me off the morphine. They weaned me off. And uh, they put me on proper diabetic meds that I was supposed to have. They put me on the proper meds to help with the pain that I was supposed to be on. And, um, you know, they helped me get back on track. Well, I get out of the hospital and i got to go to see my doctor because of all this crap. And he turns around and puts me on back on the morphine, 
back on all these other pills you've pushed on me. And I lost it. He said, do you not take any specialist or any other doctor's recommendations that they give you? I have been to hundreds of specialists at this point. You got to think about it, 1998 till 2017. You have to imagine the amount of specialists someone like me has seen from a car accident like I sustained. And he goes, they didn't know what they were talking about. And I, I still to this day have to walk around using a cane, but I'm walking. I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. Okay? I, I overcame that. And I've got this doctor pushing more drugs on me. So I flipped out. I told him, at this point, the only thing I want to do is I want to take my cane. I want to shove it down your throat. Basically rape his mouth with my cane. And I said, and if you ever, ever push anything else on me or any of my other family members, I will come get you. And I walked out. I told my wife, I said, you can deal with this fucking retard from now on. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I'm getting clean. You guys can, he can fuck himself. Well... He told my wife I was fired as a patient, which I don't give a shit about, okay? Everyone needs a family physician, but uh, that kind of family physician I can do without. Since then, I've been clean for almost two years now without any morphine. Uh, all the other drugs that he pushed on me, gone. Now, before that, I wouldn't have been able to do this show. My confidence was gone. My my capacity to speak to other people even through a camera wouldn't have happened um I, I was depressed all the time i still get depressed i still battle with depression but i look at a long life of pain and that will never go away it's there 24 7 even today it's there 24 7 but i work through it now i and i can manage to work through it with the morphine i couldn't work through it so now I do this podcast, I work on my son's car, I enjoy it, I do woodworking for my wife, I, I create things that she, she wants in the house, and I use, um, I use reclaimed lumber, you know, I, I do so much, and then gaming, I couldn't even play video games during, during this time, because I just couldn't focus on playing an actual game anymore. And, and I've been a gamer since I was a kid. I was a kid that used to be in, in the arcade ga uh, store, you know, where all the kids used to hang out with before they stopped doing that around this these areas. Um, I was one of those kids that, you know, I'd, I'd skip school to be at the arcade and have a ball, waste my, all my fucking money just playing arcade. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't write. Well, now I'm a published author. I've got a podcast that seems to be growing almost daily now at this point it seemed like it went through a little bit of a plateau and now we're growing and I'm reaching out to other places like my old Facebook friends to join the community join something that's different and you know I have a better relationship with my kids because I'm not I'm not stoned all the time because of the morphine um, I can actually hold a conversation now and they don't have to worry about me because I've got suicidal tendencies. That's long gone. Now, I still battle through a lot. I'm battling right now. I'm battling to get my second book published. And I have come to a spot where I've hit a roadblock. My mind just won't focus on it. So I'm hoping this summer things will get back on track with book two. Book one... I self-published. I want to try book two, be getting published uh, the, the other way, you know, doing it the professional way. Um, the book was successful, and it's still selling, so that's all good. I've created merchandise for that book. I'm creating merchandise for this show, um, and you can find that on Teespring, or I, I can, I've got some new stuff coming in very shortly. I'll be showing on the channel, and you can order it from me as well. So that is my story. That's my story, and I know there's other people that have gone through the same things, and more severely. There's people that have gone through this kind of experience, and I've met a lot of them at the brain injury clinic that I had to go through six years of my life to, and 
there's people in worse condition than I am. And I'm a lucky one. And my heart goes out to those people because I understand what they have gone through and what they're going to continue to go on through. It's a hard life. Hard life knowing that there's not going to be a, a second, a minute, or a day, or a month that you go pain-free. Not just pain-free physically. I'm talking about pain-free emotionally, um, physically, and, and mentally. It, it, everything works against you. Especially when the pain gets to the point where you want to go hide in the bathroom. Or like me, I come down here in the basement now. And, and it's hard for me to come down this, the, these basement stairs. But I do it. Why? Because I love doing this show. And I'm trying to prove to myself I can continue to do better. I can do better than what I did yesterday. I can continue to do better than I did last week. And I can continue to do better in the future. So that's why I do this. That's why I climb down these stairs every day. That's why I continue to try better with my podcast. Why I'm introducing video games into my podcast now. And, you know, this here. Actually speaking about my issues here on the, on, on the podcast. Now, I know there's a lot of people that don't actually like it when someone does these uh, sub-stories. I do apologize for that. Um, but I'm building the community here. I want people to be able to trust me and be able to talk to me. And, and it's been going good, especially with the live streams. I've had viewers starting to use the live chat and connect with me while I'm doing the wrestling games and other things. And I appreciate it. And that's what I am looking to do. Now, I understand people in my condition or even someone that hasn't even gone through quite as much. Um, maybe, you know, they lost a loved one or something, you know, they need to speak with someone sometimes and, you know, if you're comfortable enough with it, I like I am right now, you can talk about it on your channel. So I welcome you send me a sub story, be it wrestling related, be it personal. And if you're comfortable with me reading it here on pillar to post, you know what? There's going to be someone out there that can actually connect with you on a different level and maybe offer some advice to you that uh, might aid you and pull you through your slump or your 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 trials that you're you're struggling through like I have been so if you feel like it this is what I'm looking for okay so let's move on okay we've gotten rid of our, our sub story or stories I've given you a wrestling story I've given you um, a very very private, very uncomfortable story about myself. And I've talked a little bit about it before. And like, I, I, I didn't go right into detail all the struggles I've gone through, but you get the idea. So let's move on and let's head into the news before um, my own sub story gets to me. John Cena as a free agent. What the hell is that about? Well, let's, uh, let's read this article first, and then we're going to discuss this. And I want you guys to feel free to use the comments below to uh, address this, because it doesn't make sense to me why he's all of a sudden a free agent. So John Cena has certainly been busy since his last appearance on WWE television at WrestleMania 33, where he proposed to Nikki Bella after they defeated The Miz and Maurice. Now, whether he's been filming the movie The Pact guest hosting NBC's Today or hosting American Grit on the Fox or joining Bill Gates in the fight to end polio, there's been little time to rest for the 16-time world champion. Now, we now know the leader of the C-Nation is on his way back to SmackDown Live on July 4th after a long absence, but could he is, excuse me, but could his team blue return to be a bittersweet one? Well, here's what uh, they're going to go on about. Cena's status as a free agent has the WWE Universe wondering exactly what that means for his future. WWE.com has learned that the C-Nation leader became a free agent during the Superstar Shake-Up after WrestleMania. Which doesn't make sense. Because that has never been brought up since. Or at all. Now all of since brought up. After the Superstar shakeup, he was a free agent. Why wasn't that announced back then? Now, um, let's see, where was I? 
Okay, yeah, after the Superstar shakeup after WrestleMania, but not much else is known about what that status entails. Now, Cena has been Team Blue through and through since the WWE brand extension, having been the third selection, seventh overall, of SmackDown Live Commissioner Shane McMahon and General Manager Daniel Bryan in the WWE draft. Now, could Cena simply be staying with SmackDown Live when he returns, or will he be saying goodbye to Team Blue and heading to Monday Night Raw? Find out when Cena makes his return to WWE on July 4th edition of SmackDown Live at 8, 7 Central on the USA Network. Um, like I said, this makes absolutely no sense. It was never, ever discussed that John Cena had become a free agent during the Superstar Shakeup. So all of a sudden, he goes away on hiatus, you know, um, do all these other side projects, plus, you know, be with Nikki Bella and all this. And now when he's slated to return, all of a sudden he's a free agent. But this happened back when the Superstar Shakeup happened. Why weren't we informed of this way back then? And now... What I can see them doing is using them for SmackDown and Raw. Because obviously without John Cena, SmackDown can't do anything. And without Cena, Raw's ratings just won't come out of the toilet. So they need John Cena over there to pick up the fucking slack. No, you don't need John Cena. You actually need writers that understand the wrestling business. You need bookers that know how to book a proper match instead of throwing all these cluster fuck matches together. Eight-man tag team matches, six-man tag team matches almost weekly. And especially when you're coming up to a go-home show for a pay-per-view. Not one of these creative writers understand the wrestling business and how it works. And yet, there's rumors saying that Vince McMahon is doing most of the writing because he insists on it. I don't know if that's fucking true, and I don't really know if I could believe that. I don't think the old man has um, that kind of time. And even if he did, why the hell wouldn't someone stand up to him? Especially, you got Shane McMahon involved on SmackDown now, and he's not going to stand up for his his brand and say, Look, Dad, you gotta you got to cut this out and let the writers do their shit. Because you're making this wrestling business go into the slums. Okay? This is the worst slump in the ratings that WWE has suffered since probably the um, the Attitude Era when they were fighting WCW. And that's fucking sad. But they think John Cena is the cure-all? I don't think so, people. Come on. John Cena's got millions and millions upon millions of fans I do understand that but just one man isn't going to pull Raw out of the toilet or pull Smackdown further in the ratings not going to happen yes maybe for one two three weeks but on a continual basis not going to happen so I don't understand this whole free agent bullshit okay he was Smackdown there was no free agent talk until this moment and now all of a sudden well, wow, he's the god. He's going to save wrestling. He's going to save WWE by coming back early and pulling both shows out of the toilet. All they have to do is simply look at what Triple H and William Regal are doing for NXT. And your problems, for the most part, are solved. They are keeping it simple. Stupid. Okay? Simple thing. Keep it simple. Other than that, the only thing you need to really do is fix your 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 tag divisions, your women's division. That's all you need to do. How hard is that? Uh, sorry, I just got a message from someone. I was just checking it out. I do apologize. It is concerning this show, so I need to look. Um, now let's move on. And please share your comments below. You know, don't be afraid to. I want to know what you guys think about this whole free agent thing and John Cena supposedly being able to pull the ratings out of the toilet because simply I don't see one man being able to do that, okay? Now, if it was Stone Cold and The Rock, yeah, sure, I can see shit going down. 
just one man ain't gonna do it all. Okay, so we there's talk about a segment involving WWE legends reportedly planned for WWE Money in the Bank. So according to the Wrestling Observer, some type of le legend segment is planned for WWE Monday uh, Money in the Bank on Sunday night. As of now, Ric Flair, Bob Orton Jr., Larry Henning, Baron Von Raschke, and Greg Gagne are all confirmed to appear on the show, and names such as Gerald Briscoe, Rocky Johnson, and Ted DiBiase have also been rumored to appear. Now, the idea behind the legends appearing is that they were all big draws in St. Louis, which is where Money in the Bank takes place this year, and while it's not confirmed what the legend segment will entail, it could play into the main event as a way for Jinder Mahal to retain the WWE title. So, you mean to tell me that you're going to use a bunch of old timers to somehow cause Jinder Mahal to retain the WWE title? Why? You don't have enough people on your roster that can, you know, maybe back up Jinder Mahal, you know, become part of his little clique and help him out so that way they get a shot in the future instead of Randy Orton. What the hell? This is what I'm talking about. Get your heads out of your asses. Start using actual writers that know wrestling. Get a creative crew together and bookers that know what the hell to do. Now, I'm not saying I don't want to see some of these guys. I was a huge fan of some of these guys. But I don't need them getting involved in a main event match at Money in the Bank. I need to see them and see that they're still doing okay. They're still alive. Have a little, you know, segment in the backstage with them. I don't care. But they don't need to be involved in the main event of the night why so moving on huge update on the Kurt Angle uh, about the uh, update on Kurt Angle's in ring WWE future now everyone's interested in knowing what's going to go down with this and you've all seen it in the past couple of weeks him being more focused on that uh, that message that was delivered to him by Corey Graves than anything else so, according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, WWE officials are planning on doing a match between Triple H and WWE Hall of Famer Kurt Angle in the very near future. Okay. I'm not going to go on any further yet. They finally convinced Sting to join the WWE where he can retire from the business and finally make an appearance on WWE television. What did they do? They fed him to Triple H and made him lose. So, is this what they want for Kurt Angle now? Kurt Angle's been in the WWE before. I use Sting as a reference because it's a good one. But Kurt Angle, I think, brought his success even higher once he joined Impact Wrestling and did a few stints in other companies. And he comes back and they want to make sure that he's not an alcoholic anymore. They want to make sure he's away from the drugs, which is smart. But now they're gearing up to bring him back into the ring. And who do they want to feed him to? Triple H. Triple H has had one memorable match. That was against The Undertaker. One match in his entire career. Now anyone can dispute this. I don't care if you do. Okay, I'm not going to... I'm not going to hate on you for it. But in my opinion, his best match was against Undertaker in the Hell in a Cell with Shawn Michaels as the guest referee. And at the end of that match, Undertaker and Shawn Michaels helped Triple H to the locker room. That was memorable. I don't remember any of his other matches because, frankly, he has never been that entertaining to me and he's never been that good of a wrestler to me. He's gotten by... And if, to be honest, I think the most he should have ever been was maybe 
the Intercontinental Champion, and maybe one of the greatest Intercontinental Champions, but not as a world champion. To me, he just never had it in him. That's my point of view, okay? But why does every legend, every returning star, or every legend that has never worked with WWE before, like Sting, have to get fed to him? You know what, Triple H, in my opinion, what he's doing right now is memorable, okay? He is building the future with NXT. And there is not very often that you can shit on what he has done with NXT. Him, William Regal, and their creative crew. They have made NXT far superior, in my point of view, than what we're seeing on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown on Tuesdays. Okay, you've got Raw that has three hours, you've got SmackDown that has two, and you have NXT that has one hour, and I'm more excited to see what goes down on NXT on Wednesdays than I am to see what's going to happen on, on Monday and Tuesday. That's what, what Triple H needs to concentrate on right now. That's where his focus needs to be, NXT. Because that is the future, and he's actually building something that we can look forward to in the future okay that's what my opinion is let's move on with the article now Meltzer did comment on when the match will take place or how or I should say he did not comment okay did not comment on when the match will take place or how it will get there but it should be noted that there is currently a storyline WWE has been going or doing with Angle and Corey Graves. Also, it was noted that Raw Commissioner Stephanie McMahon should be returning to TV soon to work playoff Angle as the Raw General Manager. Now, Stephanie hasn't been seen on WWE television since going through a table at WrestleMania 33. Kurt Angle was named the General Manager of Raw the night after WrestleMania. You know what? I think everyone can be happy that we've had such a long break from having Stephanie McMahon screaming on Monday Night Raw because I could honestly say the ratings would be probably even lower then than they are now so the longer she stays away the healthier Raw might be now it could be a hell of a lot healthier if you got your creative shit together and bookers to actually book and keep Vince McMahon away from any kind of storyline plots because obviously look at great balls of fire he's in his own world he's not thinking about the future of wwe anymore he's lost in his own little demented fucking world okay he needs to be kept away from production here on wwe because that is good for business let's move on Big backstage update on Braun Strowman's WWE return. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? So according to PWInsider.com, WWE Raw star Braun Strowman has been cleared to return to the ring. Now Strowman, who has been out of action since suffering an elbow injury a month ago, was reportedly cleared to return to action a week ago and is waiting for WWE Creative to reinsert him into TV storylines. Now, as we reported prior to WWE Extreme Rules, the current plan is WWE is for Strowman to face Brock Lesnar for the Universal title at SummerSlam in August. After Lesnar has his one and done with Matt, uh, with Samoa Joe at the uh, Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view coming very soon. Oh my God, that, that name just, oh, so much could be said about that name for that title or that pay-per-view. But, um, yeah, Strowman, he's still going to be working at the Performance Center, making sure he, the ring rust is not there. It's only been a month, but a month can do a lot to someone, especially when they're recuperating from a surgery. So, he's going to probably be making his return very soon. But I think if I, was, if I was smart, or if they were smart, they'd wait till Great Balls of Fire was here, and they would have him insert himself into the Brock Lesnar Joe match because he's not done with Brock he never got to get even close to being done with Brock they, so if you look at it they don't want Joe 
to win the title. It's going to be a one and done. So why bother even, you know, have him kick in his, a Brock's ass to the point where it looks like Joe's got a chance. Bring Brock out, have him annihilate both men. And then look down at Brock and tell him, I'm not done with you yet. Okay? Good way to do it. Or even after the match. You know, you don't want to take the spot away from um, from Samoa Joe. Even though it's a one and done. You don't want to take the spotlight off him. So maybe after the match. After Brock Lesnar has, you know, put him out to pasture. Have Braun Strowman come out and just put the boots to him. Um... Okay, so another reply to, or another comment by someone for Pillar to Post. I, I'm, I keep on looking because every time a pop-up comes, um, I'm waiting for news from my new sponsors. Okay, so I've got Audible right now and this new one. And it's important to me. So if you see me looking down and it's a pop-up that came notifying me that I got some kind of message in my email. Vince Russo gives Eric Bischoff an apology. Now, if you remember correctly... We just had an apology given to Jim Cornette and Russo and Cornette have been at each other's throat for many, many years now. Now, can be said that Cornette antagonizes and begins the issues that always develop between these two, but it's always entertaining. So on WWE Network's Table for Three episode entitled Creative Committee, Jim Cornette, Michael P.S. Hayes, and Eric Bischoff shared a meal and discussed many topics, including Cornette and Bischoff's hatred of one Vince Russo. Now, later on in, in later on his own show, Cornette also made claim that Russo was begging for a job from Vince McMahon. This led to Vince Russo joining the Wrestling Inc. podcast to respond cor to Cornette's comments, saying they were untrue and he was or he has publicly read his emails with Vince McMahon. Cornette fired back and challenged Russo to a shoot fight. Now Vince then responded with an apology to Jim Cornette. And uh, if you haven't seen the videos, it was hilarious. And this is what some of what was said. First and foremost, I want to apologize for you blowing out your knees when you fell off the scaffold because you are a mark who didn't know how to take a bump. I want to apologize, Jim, for you putting Smoky Mountain Wrestling out of business. I want to apologize, Jim, for you being fired from Ring of Honor for a public emotional outburst. I want to apologize, Jim, for being fired from WWE for assaulting another employee. And I want to apologize, Jim, because I'm from New York. That is just some of what was said from uh, by Vince Russo to Cornette. Now, this week, though, it's all about Eric Bischoff. But before we get going, I do need a drink. Now, in the above, uh, actually, there was a video I did watch before I did this, so apologize. Russo has now offered up a public apology to Eric Bischoff about a number of events, including his time with TNA. Russo had this to say. I also want to apologize that a man had to have his lips sewn to another man for the better part of 20 years. Sounds like a bad centipede movie to me, Eric. But that was the case between you and Hulk Hogan, wasn't it? And Eric, how do I know that was the case? Here's how I know. It was the case. Because I want to apologize when Dixie Carter wanted to hire Hulk Hogan... You rode in on Hulkster's coattails and you told Dixie Carter, Hulkster ain't coming without me, brother. This is a two-for-one deal. And you milked Dixie for an exorbitant amount of money when she never wanted you in TNA in the first place. Now, Russo continued to talk about how Bischoff wanted to put TNA head-to-head -head against Raw. And he goes on to say, I want to apologize for you convincing Dixie Carter that we had to go head-to-head -head with Monday Night Raw. It's time, Dixie. We're ready. We got the Hulkster. We can defeat them, Dixie. Yes, Eric. I believe it was you and the Hulkster who were the big cheerleaders. Why? It wasn't your money. And what did you do? You embarrassed TNA and you shamed TNA and you scarred TNA for life. 
Now, he then switched gears to apologize for getting Bischoff a job with the WWE. Despite their relationship, Russo says it was best for business. He goes on to say, I said, Vince, you've got to hire this guy. He is a great performer. You could tell great stories with him. I did that, Eric. Me, Vince Russo. Even though you were my arch enemy because it was the right thing to do for business. You think Vince would have ever brought you into the WWE on his own. He heard the same stories about you that everybody else knew. But it was me who put you over to him that got you the job at the WWE. How ungrateful can you be? Now Russo then believed he figured out why Bischoff and him have been at odds. It's because of Russo's work at WWE and Bischoff running the NWO idea into the ground. Russo goes on to say, the man with one good idea, a whole career, one good idea, and granted, they are many that say that you stole the NWO angle from Japan. I'm going to give it to you, bro. I'm going to give it to you. You created that all on your own. But Eric, because you were a one-trick pony, you drove that idea into the ground and you opened the door for me and you allowed me to kick it in and beat your ass and get you fired. Isn't that what this is all about, bro? How 20 years later, you can't get over that. Now to finish up his apology, Russo left with these parting words. Eric, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being better than you. If I had a mic now, I would drop it. End of rant. Or I should say apology. It's not a rant when you're apologizing, right? Um, I, I get a kick out of these guys. Um, now, we start off with Cornette and Vince Russo going back and forth. And then Cornette challenging Russo to a basically street fight. And whatever happens, happens. Whoever walks away, walks away. Basically threaten Vince Russo's life. And then we had Russo go back and do this apology where he apologizes for all the bad things that happened to Cornette. And now we get it again where he turns it on Eric Bischoff. These guys basically are drumming up business and viewership for their shows. It's ratings. That's what they're doing. Now, are they working together for it? I don't know. I can't claim that. But it's starting to seem like it is possible because it seems more like a way to draw viewers into their podcast than it is anything else. Because seriously, look at the age of these guys. Are they going to really meet in some back alley and beat the shit out of each other and leave one lying in on their deathbed or at death's door to begin with? I don't think so. Okay? These guys, I look old. Okay? I look old and I'm not even 40 yet. And those guys are at least 20 years older than me. And you're going to tell me this isn't all just one big hoax so that way they can drum up viewership for their shows. I don't know, people. It is entertaining, though. It is entertaining. We get more on Braun Strowman's WWE return, and the source is Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Now, after having minor elbow surgery, reports have gone back and forth on if Braun Strowman is cleared for action by the WWE. No matter the case... It looks like he will be scheduled to work the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view on July 9th. It's expected to be against Roman Reigns, since that was the original plan before Strowman would go on to face Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. So, we still could possibly get Roman Reigns versus the Monster Among Men at Great Balls of Fire. Hey, man, I want to see Roman get destroyed by the Monster. Everybody does. So, if that happens... I'll be there, and I'll be there regardless, but I'll definitely be staying tuned, in tune with what's going on. Now, Strowman and Lesnar SummerSlam match was, as of last week, planned to be the show's main event. So, come SummerSlam, it will be Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman, unless that has changed. Who knows? But either way, as long as the Monster Among Men ain't done with the uh, goddamn Superman of WWE. This is going to get interesting. Um, Davy Boy Smith Jr. 
talks about Tyson's kids in uh, Tyson kids injury and if he will ever wrestle again so I thought this was a nice one to talk about um, and the source is Hannibal TV now former WWE superstar Davy Boy Smith jr. recently spoke with Hannibal TV to discuss his former tag team partner Tyson kids injury that was that has kept him uh, out of the ring now, Davey detailed the significance of Kidd's injury and revealed if he thinks he'll ever wrestle again. Here's what he had to say. But before we get into that, David Boy Smith Jr. starts off by saying, So his, one of the things, and we can go back to talking about the training with Tokyo Joe. I mean, we endured some hardcore shit. One thing that saved him with his neck injury was that they said his neck muscles uh, were so strong that literally when the, the break, not to say the explosion happened, the only thing that was holding his head, his spine, his head, and his neck together were the, his muscles that were so strong. Wow, he's kind of all over the place when he talks. When they initially did the MRI and everything, they were just like, whoa, don't move, don't sneeze. We're going to airlift you from here all the way back to Tampa. We need to do surgery. And I think it was comparable to the Christopher Reeves neck injury, which left him, you know, a vegetable, basically. For him to survive that, basically, they said that very few chance of people that survive it and don't die wind up in a wheelchair, and they are completely paralyzed they compared it to somebody hanging off a cliff by their pinky it goes on to say for him to have survived that that's a testament to him and to the training we endured as his neck muscles were that strong to hold everything together he's doing good i just or i was just down there earlier last month and he's training i actually introduced him to an awesome massage therapist named jason cairo now these guys are awesome massage guys and the range of motion in his neck has already night and day compared to what it was before. Now is that to say that he's he's ever going to wrestle again? I don't know. I don't think so. That's not because of him but there's a lot of risk of something happens or if he lands wrong and he becomes basically a vegetable. And WWE to their credit they are pretty good with keeping things with their rules nowadays, protecting talent and stuff like that. Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson, he's another example. If they won't let him back into the ring, I'm sure if he go, he was wrestling safe every night and only wrestling some time, he could probably pull it off, but let's say someone hits him accidentally. This isn't ballet. Somebody hits him or he lands wrong and his concussion Thing comes back and it becomes ex uh, exponential or his neck injury or something that's kind of the risk they're looking at it's tough to say I wish he could come back but for the sake of his health I don't think he's going to um, you know it, it's it's tough to say um, I've come a long way since my injury I, I don't think Tyson Kidd should risk it I really don't he's gone through enough um, if he's gotten to the point where he is able to train again and walk properly and not worry about being in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, I think he should accept things the way they are. Now, I'm not saying play the hand that you're dealt with or, you know, just because something happened, you know, don't do what you love. There are still other options in the wrestling world for him. He can become a trainer at the Performance Center. Or uh, help out on NXT. There is still options there for him, just like there was for me. You know, I must I might have lost all my ability to do certain things, but I gained some of the abilities that I still love to do back, and I have accomplished some of those dreams I wanted to complete. So there are things that he can do. He doesn't need to return to the ring and risk his health to do so. Big news. In the UFC and boxing world, Floyd Mayweather versus Conor McGregor officially announced. Now, after months of speculation, the super fight between former boxing world champion Floyd Mayweather and current UFC light heavyweight champion, or I should say lightweight champion, Conor McGregor, is now official. 
The two will meet on August 26th from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Now, the boxing match will be contested over 12 rounds at 154 pounds, with both Mayweather and McGregor using 10-ounce gloves. Showtime and Mayweather promotions will handle the event, which is expected to range in price closer to the previous Mayweather Manny uh, Pacquiao, or Pacquiao boxing card. Uh, it's the biggest fight in combat sports and biggest payday ever. All sides are happy with the deal, UFC President Dana White said on UFC tonight. He goes on to say, I think this breaks the record in US, the UK, Australia, and Canada too. Floyd versus Pacquiao did 4 million and rising because with a pay-per-view, the buys keep rolling in for years. So, me, I'm not a huge boxing fan, but to see Conor McGregor step in there with Floyd Mayweather, man, I see great things happening, and I see a fucking knockout. Now Mayweather has aged, and he is older, um, but the guy trains like a horse. If you've ever witnessed one of his training re regiments, it is ridiculous. And Conor McGregor is going to have to step up. He's got a big mouth. He's cocky. He knows how to fight. But this isn't the UFC. This is boxing. You're entering Floyd Mayweather's territory. So you're going to have to go to his pace. You're going to have to watch what he does. You're going to have to learn what he does. Because simply knowing how to fight is far different than knowing how to box. But it is going to bring in millions and people are going to watch it. I'm probably going to watch it myself. WrestleMania in London. Now, The Independent ran an article about the possibility of WrestleMania coming to London, England. They referenced a survey that WWE sent out this week to WrestleMania 33 attendees, asking their interest in future venues, which also included locations like New York City and Toronto. The article mentioned the last major show held in England, which was SummerSlam in 1992, which saw the British Bulldog defeat Bret the Hitman Hart, for the Intercontinental Championship in front of over 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium. Uh, you know what? I, I don't see a problem with them having WrestleMania in different countries. Right? It doesn't always need to be in the States and the uh, in Canada. They can branch out to England and other huge venues that they have out in different countries. It's not going to hurt the WWE and it's not going to hurt the fans uh, fans as well, except for those that want to be there live. Um, but all in all, we still get to watch it regardless. It's going to be on pay-per-view. So to me, it doesn't matter where it is. You know, Baron Corbin uh, was named the honorary starter for this Saturday's NASCAR drive-in for Lineman 200 in St. Louis, Missouri. Now, Baron Corbin will be joining AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler, Shinsuke Nakamura, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. Uh, and they're all going to be reaching for that briefcase in this Sunday's Money in the Bank contract ladder match. Now, why did I even bother reading this? Well, I want to tell you something. It's been said since Baron Corbin's debut. His star's going to keep on climbing, and he's branching out. People are coming up and inviting him to these big events. This is a big event for NASCAR, and he's going to be uh, the starter. Hey, nothing wrong with that. It is nothing but publicity for Baron Corbin, and he deserves it. It's good that people are starting, or corporations and, and other businesses are starting to draw his attention, or he, he's starting to draw their attention, I should say. It does nothing but up his credibility and his stardom. And Baron Corbin, he's worked hard for it. He's improved quite a bit since he started in WWE. And you can't take away from the success he's had in the ring. Good news on the May Young Classic. Several names revealed for WWE's May Young Classic. And this source is from the PW Insider. As noted, WWE will tape the Mae Young Classic on July 13th and July 14th at Full Sail, Full Sail University. The following names have been confirmed for the 32 competitor tournament. So let's get this on. Bianca Blair, 
this is what they have to say about her stand out at the WWE Performance Center and signed in April 2016 Danielle Cam Camella WWE developmental talent trained at WWE Hall of Famer Rikishi School Julia Ho WWE developmental talent with MMA background trained with Brian Kendrick uh, Kimberly Frankel WWE NXT talent formerly known as Kimber Lee on the Indies Lacey Evans NXT talent and a Marine formerly known as Macy Estrella Mary Kate NXT talent and formerly known as Rosie lot of love in TNA Sarah Logan NXT talent formerly known as Sarah Bridges in NXT and crazy Mary Dobson on the Indies uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get this name right but I'm gonna try Tanera Mello WWE developmental talent signed last year black belt from Brazil Victoria Gonzalez WWE developmental talent signed in 2016 college athlete and daughter of Rudy boy Gonzalez um, this one I'm I'm not gonna get it right uh, Zoa or Zhao Zia W's first female Chinese talent not sure if I even came close to pronounce that word right and I'm probably a goon for not knowing it but hell I have not studied a lot of Chinese and I have not studied how to pronounce some of their names I'm not sure how to go about it but I hope I came close now the tournament will be uh, will tape on July 13th and July 14th but there are plans to hold live finals on Tuesday September 12th possibly at the WWE Smackdown tapings in Las Vegas that night the plan is to release the first round of tournament in late August with the second round being released in early September via the on-demand section of the WWE Network hey you know what doesn't matter what the names are coming in it is going to be great the only problem is these tournaments end up being greater than what happens after them once they're on the main roster once they get introduced it is usually turned to shit look at the cruiserweight challenge everyone was bragging and how saying how brilliant and how exciting it was done what have we gotten from the cruiserweight since nothing but boredom on 205 live okay we get two and three minute spots on raw with the cruiserweights every now and then one is thrown in on uh, in the action on nxt come on yes wwe needs these women they need to boost their women's roster not only on smackdown and raw but on nxt they need these women I don't the tournament's gonna be good it's gonna crown some someone or I don't know what their plans are really with this tournament uh, they can't really crown a woman's champion they can crown a May Young Classics champion but I mean really they can't crown a woman's champion because you've got three of them in WWE already Asuka um, Alexa Bliss and Naomi God it took me a bit to remember who they were Asuka I never fail to remember but um, whatever they do it's always going to be better than what we see and that's probably why Vince McMahon hates uh, tournaments so much because they are so good he doesn't know what to do with them afterwards because he can't compare with what they did at the tournament so that's why he hates tournaments so much it's got to be so Jim Ross says Cody Rhodes needs this match against Okada at NJPW's US G1 special. Now Jim Ross spoke to Busted Open about the upcoming match between Okada and Cody Rhodes at NJPW's G1 special. Ross commented, I think it's a good booking. Cody needs this match. He needs to show everybody exactly where he is since leaving the WWE because I believe that eventually Cody will make a triumphant return to the WWE or uh, as a much better performer and businessman than he was when he left and he will make a major impact 
but right now it's a great place to see where he is in that evolution. Now whether I'm right or I'm wrong, this is a big match for him and of course Okada got got that pressure that he seemingly now has to have five star like matches every outing and that's damn hard to do. Fucking right it is. Now Rhodes will take on Okada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship on July 1st and you know what? I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to be watching it this weekend and I'll be reviewing it. Um, the uh, Okada Omega match number two. I'm waiting for this weekend to come around. That's when I'll watch it and I'll review it. Um, once again, I have to say I miss Lucha Underground because I have been so busy around here in the house um, doing things for this upcoming indie project and, um, you know, family too. So I'm a little bit behind this week. So I end up missing Lucha Underground last night, which really bugs me in a big way. So I'm hoping I can find it somewhere to rewatch it, and that way I can do my review. Okay, um, let's see if I have any other articles. But to touch on Cody Rhodes, Cody Rhodes already has made a big name for himself in the Indies. What he does with this next match with Okada, that could make or break him. If he doesn't look great in that match, which I know he's going to look great, but shit happens. If he doesn't look great, his chances of ever coming back to WWE with a prestigious record and, and to show that WWE had him wrong the whole time is out the window. It's gone. Do I think he's going to perform excellently? Of damn course. Okay, he's... Not only Dusty Rhodes' son, he is Cody Rhodes. He's already proved himself. You know, I don't care what anyone says. WWE's marketing and creative strategy, what they did with Cody Rhodes when he was there, complete bullshit. What he is doing now in the in in, in the independence, the nightmare of America or uh, the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes brilliant and he's been doing a great job since he's left wwe i tip my hat off to the guy now let me see if there's any more news ah okada on kenny omega match at njpw dominion usg1 special and talks about cody rhodes challenging him now okada spoke with new japan pro wrestling after his match against kenny omega at dominion on sunday and here are just some of those highlights he talks about going to a 60-minute time limit draw against Omega, and he says this. It's all too much. I never thought I'd have an opponent that took me to the 60-minute mark, let alone beyond that and not be beaten. He took me to my limits and passed them. It was a real surprise. I'm sore. I'm weak. My hands feel numb. Obviously, I took a lot of punishment. But as time went on, it became harder and harder to stand. I was spaghetti-legged. It was my first 60-minute match, but it was hard fought. Um, let's see, where was I? Hard fought. It was a hard fought all the way. And Kenny, too. I can't honestly say we drew at 60. But it was, if we had 70 minutes, I would have beaten him. I just don't know. That's how tough Kenny was. I haven't felt that way about an opponent for a very long time. Now he talks about defending the IWGP heavyweight title at the USG1 special and what kind of match he wants to have. Okada says, I want to have a match that says this is New Japan Pro Wrestling. The American fans want that and of course the Japanese fans will be watching on NJPW World. To Japanese fans, maybe it's the same NJPW, but it has a very, uh, it has a different nuance to bring that to America. I want to show the level of an IWGP title match and have people say, come back to LA or come back to New York. Basically, to have people all over the world wanting us to bring our product there. This is the first step towards that. Now he talks about Cody Rhodes challenging for the title. He goes to say this, he's welcome to try. 
He and I have only shared a ring once, so neither I nor the NJPW fans have a clear idea of how good he really is. It's clear he is very able, it's a fresh opponent for me, and he has an international name. So, Okada, looking forward to Cody Rhodes and him at their, their, their very first official meeting for the title. I think it's going to be great. I think they're going to try and outdo what Okada and Omega did. I think Cody Rhodes is capable of taking it there. Um, but it's going to be hard to do. He's going to have to work his ass off in order to defeat any kind of record that Omega and Okada have set in their first and second matches. Because, man, from everything I've heard from number two, everything I've seen from number one, just blows my mind. And if Cody can even top that, man, he deserves the praise of all the fans. This has been Pillar to Post. I am very happy that I could get this done for you. It will be up on Patreon first. So make sure if you want to get this news earlier, like uh, Tyler Black, make sure you become a patron. Now you can, you can uh, pledge as low as a dollar a month. But if you want to pledge more, that offer is there. There are rewards for those that want to pledge more, and I'll make sure you get those rewards. Um, also, if you enjoyed the show, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you are not a subscriber, always, always smash that like button. And if you haven't yet, click that little bell. It'll give you a notification every time Pillar to Post uploads and goes live and I will be going live actually I should have been live streaming already but I wanted to get this done before I went live I thank you all very much and I will be seeing you tomorrow have a good one